Hey guys, this is Phil. Um, this is going to be your final review for your Excel uh, Microsoft certification. Um, what we're going to be going over today are the formulas. We're going to present data visually, sharing worksheet data, and analyzing and organizing data. Okay, so let's get started. First, we're going to do um, basic formulas, adding, multiplying, dividing, subtracting. So what we can do is we can just do it right here in, in this table. Uh, we already got the total columns, so say we want to know what the grand total is. All you do is you click on that uh, the cell that you want the grand total in. You have to hit the equals key first for any kind of formula. Um, and then there's a bunch of different ways you can get the sum. Quickest and most effective way is to just click the auto sum uh, button in the function library under formulas because what this will do is automatically select all your data in that column so that way you don't have to type in these cell references here. Um, then all you do is go ahead and click enter, or click enter, hit enter, and, um, and there you go, now you have the grand total. But say I didn't want the sum, I wanted to multiply all these numbers together for some reason. So what you can do is you can actually hit control tilde and t the tilde button is next to the one key below the escape key on your keyboard and that'll automatically show the formula in the cell so you can go ahead and manipulate the, the formula down here so you can see it so you can see that now I want. Okay so now we want to do some multiplication. So all, you do, all you're going to do is you're going to hit the equals sign and then you want to multiply this total by this total. All you do is hit and then you hit enter and now we've got this huge number that's multiplying cell F6 by cell F10. You can do the same thing with divide. These are all just your keys on your keyboard. The divide is the forward slash. The multiply is the star and then subtract is the subtraction sign or the, the hyphen sign. So the next important thing is your order of operations. So easiest way to remember this is I'm going to type it up here in the in the function box. It's PEMDAS. So P E M D A S. And what this stands for is it's your well it's your order of operations. So when you ever you type this into a, whenever you type a formula it's always gonna take what's ever in parentheses and do that calculation first then it's exponents then the M is multiplication D is division A is addition S is subtraction so an example of this would be um, I want to do 1 plus 1 in parentheses, oops, and but then subtract by five uh, squared. So what this is going to do is it'll do the one plus one first, giving it the two, and then it's going to. Uh, do 5 squared making 25 so then it's going to be 2 minus 25 giving us the negative 23 so this is your order of operations you can do it you know if I then wanted to or out in front say we wanted to do 2 times 2 plus this 1 plus 1 you know all this other this mess back here so now it's going to be still doing this first, then it does this, now it multiplies 2 by 2, and then goes through all the addition and subtraction. So that's what you got to know for your formulas is PEMDAS, because um, that, that's how Excel is going to, that's the order Excel is going to calculate all your, all your formulas. Okay, so the next thing is absolute and relative cell references. Um, these are very important when it comes to your formulas. So uh, basically, I just made up this little data set here. This is your, this is my data set, um, and then this is my formula, as you can see up here. So right now, these are both relative cell references. 
So when I click down to the next um, cell, everything moves down one. Instead of L4 times K5, or L4 times K4, it's L5 times K5. So that's not working for me because all I want is I wanted to have the numbers 1 through 6 being multiplied by 50. So in order to do that, you need to lock in this cell um, for your formulas. So to do that, you go back up to your, your initial uh, starting cell and you start adding dollar signs. The dollar sign is what's going to make it the absolute cell reference and this is going to lock in that cell. So adding a dollar sign in front of L4 locks in the L column. So now when I go down it'll it'll only just show the L column but the number would still change so it would still be L5, L6, L7 and so on. So to fix that you gotta put a dollar sign in between the L and the 4 to lock in that 4 value. So now if I hit enter nothing's changed yet right because this was the good cell. So you're going to autofill all the way down and now all of a sudden I've got all my values because if you look L4 is still being multiplied by all of the other values so K, K is the only one that's moving because of the relative cell reference but the absolute cell reference of L4 makes sure that 5 is being multiplied by 50, 6 is being multiplied by 50 so that's very important um, you know, if, if you wanted to go down to this data set and for some reason multiply all of quarter one by its total or divide it by its total to see what kind of percentage it was. So this is when absolute cell references becomes very important. Okay, the next formula I'm going to demonstrate for you guys is the IF function. This one is used on the certification exam. It is the one probably most important logical um, formula that you guys should know. So I've already set it up right here. Um, and basically, it'll it'll prompt you when you click it. So I'll just show you for an example. If I wanted to do the if function right here, this dialog box will pop up and it'll tell you exactly what you need. So the logical test that I typed in here was I want to see if a or b6 is greater than 5,000. And if that's true, I want the, a text prompt to come back saying passed. So in order to type text in into, um, into your formula, you have to use quotation marks. So you start with a quotation and you say passed and end your quotes. Then if it's less than uh, 5,000 I want to say failed. So you do the quotation marks again, failed, and quotations. And then as you can see it's already calculated it down here saying passed. But you go ahead and click OK. Now this is all set up for you. And you just drag the auto using the autofill feature you drag it all the way down and now I can see that Adrian Parmelay failed in her first quarter. She was less than 5,000, but Mandrake Wilson passed. So that's why instead of like searching through all this, all these numbers to see which one is greater than 5,000, now you have a visual textual aid to tell you, okay, top three passed, then we had two failures, who were they, and so on. So. This worked with the autofill feature because we used relative cell references. If you um, if you try to use like a whole group of data, the function will actually fail. So you have to use the relative cell reference. Um, see, so that's B6 right now. And then if I went down to be B7, if you did um, B6 through B15 as a function, it's not going to work for you. You have to you have to use this relative cell reference and then autofill down in order to, to use the same formula through the whole entire group of data. All right, next formula group I'm gonna show you guys is the date and time group of formulas. So this is actually um, pretty helpful when you, have, when you have two dates and you need to know, say, how many work days are in between the dates 
of 724 and or September 15th and and July 24th or um, how many days just in total are in between these two dates so in order to start this we're gonna go ahead and click the date and time and I want days 360 so what this is gonna do is it's gonna show me you gotta pick your start date which is gonna be 724 then your end date 915 you're going to hit OK, and now it's going to show me, OK, I've got 51 days in between July 24th and, and September 15th. Another formula you can use is the uh, network days formula. Again, start date, end date. And then if you had any kind of holidays you wanted to input um, that are that fall in between these two dates, you would you would have that in a separate cell and then you would select that cell under your holidays um, option but let's just say even though there are that there are no holidays in between these two dates go ahead and hit OK and now it's gonna say you have 38 work days in between these two dates so you're gonna be working 38 out of the 51 days in between these two uh, dates other time formulas that are uh, helpful for dating is the time uh, now which would tell you as you can see that just popped up current date and time today does the same thing it'll return the current date so if I wanted to date this document this actually doesn't need any arguments all you need to do is just click on the today and go ahead and hit M enter or OK and it'll tell you exactly what today is um, so that's kind of helpful, but those are the, the, the four main time and date functions you're going to need to know is days 360, network days, now, which will give you your date and time, and then today, which will just give you the date. So another important formula that you're going to need to know is the VLOOKUP formula. So I've already done two examples here, I'm going to go ahead and do a third. But basically what this is going to do is it, it looks up different values in a big set of data or table. Um, and you can do this. I'm doing it on the same sheet, but if I wanted to return it on a different sheet, so if I just made a new sheet and did the VLOOKUP formula over here, it would, it would return the data. But just to make it um, easy to see, I'm going to do it on the same table. So your VLOOKUP is going to probably be under your recently used. If it's not, it's under your lookup and reference. You just got to find it. There it is right there on the bottom. So you go ahead and click it and it gives you this dialog box. You need these three arguments. You don't necessarily need the fourth, um, but it's always good just to put everything in. That way you get um, the, the closest thing that you're looking for. So your lookup value is the value you want um, this formula to, to look up. So I'm going to have it look up the value 0.745 in cell A18. And then the table array is what the, um, what the formula is going to search for this value. So I've already defined this group of data as table 2. So I'm going to go ahead and type in table 2. And then the column index number is what the formula itself is going to return. So it's searching for um, a density that's 0.745, but I can either have it return the viscosity or the temperature. So I'm going to have it return the viscosity. So that's in the second column of this table. So you're going to go ahead and type in 2. And then the range lookup is either typing in true or false. True is going to give you a close match um, to whatever it is the criteria you were searching for. False will give you an exact match. So I'm going to go ahead and do false. Click OK. And now we've got the value 2.94. So like I said, you can do this. It's more helpful if you're doing it on a separate, um, a separate sheet or something because like say you had another, another whole density chart or group of data and you needed this certain viscosity of 0.457, but you didn't want to go search through it all and then copy the you know and look through and search 
and find the value of 3.55 for viscosity. So you, in that cell, you would just type this VLOOKUP and you would get and it would return that value for you without you having to search through the whole entire data set for um, for another data set. So like, I'll just go ahead and do an example for you because that might be a little confusing. Um, so we'll go ahead and do it on sheet two. So we're going to go ahead and do equal, the lookup, and now your lookup value, you're going to go back to the value. Um, well, actually, no, we'll just do it over here. We'll just say, um, we'll put the value in a three. And the table we're going to want to do is still table two. And then the column index number of table two is still going to be column two. That'll still return the viscosity for us. Range lookup, we're going to keep false. So this isn't going to work because I didn't have a value in for um, A, but I'm um, just to make sure real quick, I'm going to do 0.457. So you're going to type in 0.457, and now this will return your viscosity for you. So as you can see, it's, it's pretty helpful, especially if you had a, a large group of data, you can carry it out through uh, your entire workbook. Another formula you guys should know is the concatenate formula. I think that's how it's pronounced. I'm just going to show you guys. Um, it's this formula right here, concatenate. Um, basically what this is going to do is it'll combine um, the text in two different cells. So in column I, I want to see Canable as Canable, not, um, not as two separate cells. So for text one, and I want to put a comma in between them. So for text one, you're going to want to click on Cane, and then it'll, it'll show up as the cell reference of B4. And then for text two, you're going to want to put in a comma, and what that'll do is it'll put a comma in between your, your first name and your last name. Um, you can put a semicolon, you could put a space, you can put whatever. I'm just going to put a, um, a comma. And text three is going to be his last name, Abel. You go ahead and click OK. And now I've got Cain Abel, his full, full name in a separate cell. And then you can do that um, autofill all the way down. I'm a, I'm a cell off here, but you know, Jacob Bernard, Jacob Bernard. So that's another really. Um, important formula you'll probably have to use it um, once on the Excel certification exam but it's just a good thing to know next thing we're going to do is the name manager so this is all in the formulas tab to find names um, so you want to have these numbers mean something to you so I'm gonna say 9.81 is an acceleration so in order to do that, you're going to go ahead and click on the define name. You selected your cell, you're going to go hit define name. And I want it to be acceleration. You go ahead and it refers to, because this was already selected, this, um, this cell. So you go ahead and hit OK. And now I want to define this as the mass of whatever the object is. So you go ahead and click define name again and I'm just going to say mass. So now what you can do is on a different worksheet on a, or I'm just going to do it on this worksheet you can actually do a formula um, that gives you the force of this uh, object. So all you would have to do here is um, hit equals and then you start typing in acceleration and all of a sudden you get this little name tag and acceleration pops up so you go ahead and click that and automatically now it's referring to this now I want to do um, times the mass so you go ahead and start typing in mass first thing that pops up your name or your defined name of mass click that now you automatically have this referenced so you can hit enter and now we've got the force of this object but now if I ever needed to I've got the number but if I ever forgot how I got this number 
I can remember now it's acceleration times your mass and if you click on it it'll show you what your acceleration was what your mass was with these different colors um, so it's, ju it's just a good way if you have a bunch of data um, to name them that way everything's a little more organized um, to use so you can also define more than just one piece of data you can define um, a whole table as a name or you know just a column of the table as a name it's whatever you would need to do um, this was just a, a good example of keeping everything organized like I don't remember what these were but because I have this formula down here now I can realize oh, okay this was the acceleration and this was the mass now say you didn't want acceleration to be this number you wanted it to be um, a number you know, 25. So to change that, you're back in your define names um, group, and you go to your name manager, and now it says, okay, acceleration mass. These are two defined areas. I want to edit them. So you select whichever you want to change. I want to change my acceleration, and you hit edit it'll keep the name and now I don't want for my selection I don't want this cell I want this cell and you hit enter and now it's gonna reference 25 is my acceleration not 9.81 so if you go ahead and hit OK and then close the name manager this number down here just changed even though it's still acceleration times mass this is now being referenced as acceleration not this number so you can do that with mass or whatever kind of um, thing you have defined as a name. So you just go into your name manager. A list of everything that's defined will be there. You can delete them as well. So now I don't want this acceleration. You highlight it. You click delete. And now the acceleration is no longer going to be there. The name acceleration is no longer going to be there. Hit close again. Now all of a sudden this formula is not working because I typed in acceleration, but that's not defined as anything. So that's how you can manipulate um, different names. So the next section we're going to be going over is the presenting data visually uh, section. So the first thing we're going to do in this section is insert um, like clip art or different images. So that's found in your insert tab under your illustrations. You can do shapes, smart art, clip art, or pictures. Um, smart art you probably will have to do these are different um, graphics like flow charts and stuff I think either it was either in the Skillsoft courses or the G metrics you had G metrics test prep you had to find like a different process flow chart um, I, I can't remember which one it was but one of these and you have to position it in a different um, place like either to the right of the data or underneath so all you had to do was just um, again go to the insert tab smart art pick your flow chart or whatever chart it is you want smart art you want and then you go to your this new formatting um, tab shows up up here with the designer format for your smart art so if you're under the design tab you can change the flow chart the different layouts you can change um, different formats about it um, if you wanted to just move the whole thing in general you have to click on this uh, gray outlined box and just click and click and drag and you can move it wherever it is wherever it is you want to move it um, you can change the word art style um, to anything that's in in, um, in here so that's cool and then you can change the the outlines of the boxes this this is the shapes so if I wanted a purple box with a white background or whatever um, that's in your shape styles group you can change the height the width of the boxes of the it, when I say boxes I mean like this box here um, outlines and everything so you can you can really manipulate it um, underneath your format tab and it'll only show up after you insert the smart art so this is going to be where you're going to be doing most of your work is in the format tab and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to insert an image uh, so we're going to go back to the insert tab going to insert a picture and I've already loaded up a picture here 
for this cute little baby. And say I don't want um, the background. I don't want this beach background. So you go back and it, once you select the picture, it'll automatically boot you to the picture tools tab, format tab. Um, and this, the adjusting is where you're going to be doing a bunch of stuff. So you can, if you click on the corrections, you can change the brightness and contrast of, of the picture itself. Um, artistic effects are kind of cool. You can make him inverted and uh, like glowy edged. Um, so, so you will have to do this um, with or on the certification exam, you'll have to insert an image and manipulate the image however the question asks you. Um, you may even have to remove the background. So once the picture is selected, you click remove background and it'll actually pick out the area that um, has the most contrast. So it's going to take out some of his arm here because it, it thinks it's too close to the picture of the beach. Um, so this isn't a great example for removing the background, but ba basically that's all you do is you just click remove background, you say keep changes, and now the beach is gone, and and um, you just got this, you just have the baby with, within that square. Next thing we're going to do is spark lines. So this is another thing that's important on the certification. You will definitely get a question on spark lines. Um, first thing you're going to do is select where you want the spark line to go and then in the insert tab under the spark lines group you're going to pick either a line column or win loss spark line. Um, I would say the most used on the test is probably the line in the column. Um, doesn't mean you shouldn't know what win loss is I'm just saying that the most frequently asked are probably based on line and column spark lines. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do a line. So you click on that and now it's going to ask you the data range that you want to make these spark lines. So I'm going to say I want it from E4 to G4. And hit OK. And now I have this little visual of how this, how this graph is working. So as you can see, because it's only one spark line, we stayed at the same three and we went down to two. Um, so what I'm going to do now, for the because I want this spark line to be throughout the whole entire data set, you're going to go ahead and autofill all the way down. And you've got all these different little mini graphics that now you can see, like, you know, Kane was doing good in job knowledge and reliability, but he's not so good at the interpersonal. Um, Bernard, you can see, you know, it's just a little visual that helps you instead of having to look at all these numbers and try to get data from it, you've got this little itty bitty chart. Um, another thing with spark lines is you, uh, once you select the spark line, the spark line tools um, design tab pops up and you can, if you click on that, you can now show all these different options. So if I wanted to show the high point, which would be obviously the highest point in the data set that I uh, chose, or the lowest point. Um, last point, first point, negative point, so you, you can really manipulate it however you want. You can change how it looks in the style. Um, you can change the different colors, so like a high point would be in green, low point would be in red, um, and you can manipulate it even farther if you go into um, these, these different buttons on the style tab. So a spark line is something that's very very helpful. It's a little mini chart. Um, the line itself doesn't get any thicker because it's just supposed to be used as a, a visual aid. If you really wanted to make a chart, you would just select um, all this data and create a chart for it. But this is something that just goes into a table to help you visually understand um, whatever it is that data set that you selected. So our next section is sharing worksheet data with other users. And the first thing on the list here is to save and send your workbook as a PDF file. To do that, you click the File tab, then the Save and Send option on the, on the sidebar. Create PDF slash XPX document under the File Types um, group. And click the button Create PDF slash XPS file. 
and as you can see you're already saving it as a PDF change the name to whatever save the document to wherever it is you want to save it and then you can attach it to an email and send it um, to to your other users so next thing is uh, inserting and manipulating comments throughout your workbook so best way to do that is to right click on the cell you want to insert the comment and go ahead and click insert comment and we'll just say um, change graph type to type 6. Click off and now you've got this comment here so when you share it whoever opens it next will now see this um, this comment and then they should be able to manipulate based on the, the directions that you, di you uh, dictated to them. Um, if you wanted to change it so now it's going back to the person who had initially written this comment you can just click on it and then change whatever it is you want to write like okay it's done and then when when uh, that original person sees it again they can be like okay that works now I'm gonna delete this comment so you right click on the cell that the comment is in and you can tell because um, of this little red arrow and obviously the huge text box but the little red um, corner top in the top right corner you right click and you can go ahead and delete the comment next thing we're going to show is how to filter data in a table so this table has been created and you know it has the filter on when you can see these little drop down um, icons if it's not you go to your data um, tab and then in your sort and filter you just click this big filter button and, and these uh, drop downs will show up. So filtering is obviously super helpful because if you as you can see here this data is incredibly long, a lot of data. So if we wanted to just see one of these products versus all of the products, filtering is super helpful. So you go to your product um, column here, click your drop down and you uncheck select all because you're only going to want to see one or two or maybe three products so I want to see Boston crab meat uh, Jack's New England clam chowder and then the long life tofu click OK and then automatically all this is going to show you in the entire table is just what you had selected as, um, as your filter you can do that with with anything so if I wanted to just show the Anton customers you click OK and now you can see that Boston crab meat out of the three that you had selected is the only one with the Anton uh, as a customer next thing you guys can do with a table is sort the data so again you can do that with your filter drop-down um, let's just change this back to select all um, so if you click your drop down button these are different sort options sort A to Z or Z to A um, best way to do it though is to go into your data tab click the sort uh, button and now it gives you your whole sort uh, dialog box so one thing you will have to do on your test is sort by multiple levels so to do that first you're going to pick your it'll tell you maybe sort by product from Z to A and then customer A to Z so to do that we're going to sort by your product um, values is just what's in the cell and we're going to go from Z to A and then you click the add level button to sort by this then by your customer values from A to Z you click OK and now all my products are from are inverted and I still have all my customers from uh, from A to Z based on the different product so once ve the veggie spread product ends Uncle Bob starts then the A to Z on the customer will restart so the last thing I'm going to show you in today's video is conditional formatting and how to apply it um, to find this it's in your home tab under the styles group 
conditional formatting. Um, so as you can see, my sum for quarter one already has some conditional formatting on it. Um, I did a gradient fill bar here. So I'm just going to show you guys that again um, with the rest of this data. So here, I'm going to go ahead and select the sum of quarter two all the way to quarter four. And I'm just going to select that much. I, um, you know, for whatever reason, you just only want to do the conditional formatting this far. So you click conditional formatting and you get all these different options. Highlight cell rules, so you can uh, highlight certain cells based on the criteria you give, make it equal to 5,000 or less than 5,000 or whatever. Um, top and bottom rules would give you the top 10%, um, bottom 10%, above average, below average, um, and, and highlight them for you. Data bars is what I just showed you on the sum of uh, quarter one column, um, which is what I'm going to be doing again. I'm just going to do it probably in a different color because um, the data bars with the gradient fill or solid fill is probably the most frequently asked um, conditional formatting rule but you can also do color scales or icon sets and you know it'll show you that with a green arrow you're good yellow arrow you're okay red arrow you're bad um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the data bars I'm gonna do a pink gradient fill and now I've got these gradient these gradient bars in here so basically what this does is now I can see that the greatest thing what I selected was this 9579.50 but the least that was there you know maybe this $518 so basically again it's kinda like your spark line it just gives you a visual um, in your actual data set versus having to create a whole separate graph just to see um, this data so it, it helps because now all your data is in one place and visually you can see um, the differences between the data. Okay and with that that ends the Excel final review session and we look forward to your success.